Hello Facebook, how is everybody? Just been joined by our friends on Instagram here. I hope that our connections are going to be good today. Don't forget, if you're new to this, I do two platforms. I'm Liz L. Me on Instagram. Thank you for all the hearts, guys. Uh, and Liz L. Wellbeing magazine Facebook page. So if one goes down, do please hop over onto the other. And a big hi and a shout out to everybody who is also watching on YouTube. If you haven't yet subscribed to YouTube, please do. It's the Liz L. Wellbeing YouTube channel because there's lots of other films on there that you might also enjoy. So what have I got for you today? Well, I hope that you have all been paying attention because I posted over the weekend about Readly, about getting your free month's worth of magazines. Readly is a magazine subscription service for digital magazines and it gives you access to tens of thousands of magazines from all over the world. It's really fabulous. I love it. And it's normally $7.99 a month, but they've given us a free month. So you take out your subscription, you click on, I know that, hi there, Amy, back from holiday, I've had a lovely time. Amy on Facebook, Amy will pop the link on Facebook and there's a link on the link tree, blue link tree link on Instagram for later. Um, but if you click on that, you sign up for your $7.99 a month, but they don't actually charge you. And you can have your first month and then if you don't want to continue, just cancel so it doesn't actually cost you anything. Um, and the reason why I wanted to mention it is because today I am cooking some recipes from back issues of the magazine. And on Readly, you can get all the back issues. So not only do you get the current issue, this is the current one, which I'll talk about later because you have not got long. If you want to subscribe, we're going to be putting our print order in very soon. So as you know, it's probably coming, well, hopefully out of retail so if you want to get the current magazine and all the issues forward in print then you will need to subscribe but I'll give you a little reminder of that later but what I've got here are two issues I've got two of my favorite recipes I wanted to share with you today and they come from previous issues um, so this one is May June 2019 those of you who might have that one to hand if you haven't uh, got Readly or subscribed or you've got a subscription, you've got your back issues. May, June 2019 is what I'm going to be cooking and that is the kombucha compote. Showing you what you can do with your kombucha, having talked about that all last week. And then this one, I'm also cooking another favourite of mine. This is the July, August issue from last year. Lovely beach shot that was taken in Lamu in Kenya. Um, and I'm cooking the recipe that's on page 55, which is a miso baked aubergine cauliflower and frica salad. Absolutely delicious. So I thought good for a meat free Monday, good to talk about fermented foods because it's got that white miso paste in it, which is so delicious and just transforms the plainest, humblest of veg into something really tasty. So anyhow, what am I going to get going with? I think I will probably get going with the... Hello, can I help you? Yes, I suppose so. Do you not know the time, Kit? I forgot. You forgot. How old are you? 17. 17. 18. Nearly 18. 18 on Thursday. Happy birthday for Thursday. What are you eating? Pastries. 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 What? This is lunchtime, sweetheart. Honestly, you've got up a bit earlier. Anyway, could you um, leave us? Thank you. And shut the door. Just hurry up, got things to do. Honestly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Shut the door. Right. Boys. Well, I think it's girls too, isn't it often? But anyway. No sense of time. 12.30. Most days. For the last 19 weeks. You would have thought, wouldn't you? Anyway. Over the head. Uh, so anyhow, let's get going without any more interruptions. Don't think there will be any more. So I'm going to make this. Um, if you have your digital edition or you have your real edition, or maybe you don't, but that is what it is going to look like. So lovely. Ask him to co-host, says Victoria. I think not. Can you imagine? That would not be Lizelle Wellbeing. That would be, I don't know what it would be, no well-being, loads of, um, you know, low alcohol beers and goodness knows what else yes i know i know kit i've got your number i've marked your card um anyhow <laughs> so what i've done here is you're going to need to roast 
some baby aubergines. Now, of course, I couldn't find any baby aubergines, so I've got large aubergines, but they will be absolutely fine. By the way, last week I recorded an incredible podcast with none other than, who do you think of when you think about aubergines? Okay, keep it clean. I think of Jotam Ottolenghi, yeah? He is just like the king of aubergines, isn't he? Anyway, he came to my studios last week, socially safely distanced, and we podcasted. And he, honestly, what he did not tell me about what to do with an aubergine. Um, <laughs> stop it, you're going to make me laugh. How to cook an aubergine really, really well is what I meant to say. And I have not been a fan of aubergines, but after being inspired by him, not only aubergines, but also pomegranate seeds, which go into this recipe. Because he was like the one who introduced us all to pomegranates and got us buying pomegranate molasses and all of that. Anyway, that is a podcast which will come out in a few weeks' time, so don't miss it. Um, <laughs> honestly, Instagram are all hysterics. Uh, yes, Pat, honestly. Boys, what can we do? There we go. So what I've done earlier... Um, because unlike my son, I was up slightly earlier. I have roasted here some cauliflower florets and some slices of aubergine. I've tried to kind of cut them into like baby looking slices. So that has just been done just with a little bit of oil and a sprinkling of sea salt. Um, so now I'm going to cook what would have been frica. So this is frica. It's um, a grain. It's like a cracked wheat based grain. This is what it looks like. Oops, um, I think you can see that it's kind of like a kind of like a large couscous, I guess, frica. Uh, but the recipe calls for 300 grams, and as you can see by my small jar of frica, I don't have 300 grams. Having decided to cook this, of course, I didn't have um, all the ingredients to hand, but doesn't matter because all my recipes are designed to allow for improvisation, personalization. So I found in my cupboard something that I bought very early in lockdown, and this was from Sharp and Park, this is one of my favorite British food brands, and it's an organic spelt grain, okay? Organic spelt grain, and this is what it looks like. It looks a bit like kind of pearl barley or um, whole grain brown rice, that kind of thing. And spelt is much more easily digested. It's an ancient grain, so people who sometimes can't tolerate the modern refined wheats can find that they can tolerate um, spelt. And it's high in fibre, it releases energy very slowly, it's got lots of iron in it, it's high in protein, so it's a really good, it's a good staple. You know, you can shove it into uh, sauces and stews, you can use it to fortify soups, to thicken them up. It's just a really lovely thing to have in your kitchen cupboard. So it takes about 20 minutes to cook spelt, and this is what it looks like because... I have been organized and I have cooked some earlier. So this is about 300 grams of spelt. So this is making, if you like, a really kind of healthy, interesting, seasonal, almost like a risotto type dish. So I am going to get going with just um, frying off a little bit of onion and celery. And celery is one of those kind of Cinderella ingredients. You know, you often don't think very much of it, you know, a lot of people kind of think, oh, what's the point of celery? Um, but actually, it really does add a really delicious savoury tang to a lot of dishes. It's kind of like a secret ingredient that cooks always use. So I've got here um, a large onion, which I have finely chopped. So I'm just going to fry that off. Uh, I'm actually using rapeseed oil for this. I would usually use olive oil, but I have run out because I've been using so much of it. So um, rapeseed oil is, is also another good British farm oil, and it's a monounsaturated oil, similar to uh, olive oil. So I'll pop the lid on there. So I'm going to fry the onion, and then just once that's softened a bit, I will do the celery. So I've got some chopped up celery here as well. Okay, so just to give you the uh, quantities, um, so yeah, one large onion, um, two celery stalks, that's kind of it here. I'm also going to use some garlic, I've got a couple of crushed cloves of garlic. I've got my 300 grams of spelt grains, this one, or you could have frica if you wanted, or you could use pearl barley, or you could use brown rice, you know, you could use lots of different things. Um, now I'm also going to use to flavour this white miso. 
Now, miso you can find increasingly commonly in supermarkets. This is actually a white miso sauce, but you can also find, I think, Tidford Organics have a miso paste that comes in a tub. And it is just something that can transform pretty much every dish. It has an umami flavour, which is a bit like the, um, you know about monosodium glutamate, you get the glutamates in certain foods. Well, miso is one of those. It's quite kind of tangy. It's got a sort of almost a pungenty smell. You need a little bit, but it's a really useful thing. And you can make miso soup, obviously, which is that kind of Japanese classic. It's also a staple of macrobiotic cooking. Um, so yeah, white miso sauce, what does this say? This says here, designed to liven up any dish, add to grilled, pan-fried, oven-baked, steamed vegetables, meat and fish. Fantastic marinade for aubergines. That's handy because I've got my aubergines. Um, this paste has a very rich, sweet and savoury taste, which will bring out the umami in your creations. There you go. So it's, yeah, it's the sweet and sour that you get from umami. Um, so it's a bit like kind of sweet and sour sauce in a bottle. And this one is made by, who does that say? You've printed over your name, you silly people. Mojoy London, is it? Can't read. No, Nojo, Nojo London. There we go. Um, obviously it's fermented, so that means that it is very good as in a source of probiotics for the gut talking about fermented things, I hope. Who's got their good gut box? Who has got good gut box? The Lizelle Wellbeings was a commercial collaboration that I did with my magazine, Lizelle Wellbeing magazine, and a website called Freshly Fermented, which is a great website. Um, lots and lots of good things there. Go and check it out. I know, Amy, you will pop a link. Where can you buy Faro? Okay, Faro, uh, you should be able to get in most big supermarkets. I know Waitrose sell Faro because I bought it from there before. You can buy it online. I'm sure you can get it in places like Holland and Barrett. So yeah, Faro or Frika, Spelt, Bulgur Wheat, you know, any of those kind of whole grains. If you're buying brown rice, by the way, the one that I really like, is short grain brown rice. If you look at lots of my recipes online, you will see that if I'm using a rice, it'll say short grain. And very often I have to buy that online because I can't find it in regular shops. I actually started cooking with it years ago when I had a, a spell as a macrobiotic about 30 years ago, um, which was a very interesting way of eating, I have to say. Right, so I have softened those onions, chopped onions, so now I think Add the chopped celery to that, just to soften this down a bit. Um, and as I said, it's the celery that's going to really give it that kind of picante tang. So this is cooked onions and cooked celery. I hope you've all got this recipe. Let me know if you're getting it online, digitally through Readly, or if you have got a back issue. Um, this issue was last summer. And what I love about the magazine, you know, being in print, is we pay a huge amount of attention to all the details. So, for example, we have beautiful photography. The paper that the magazine is printed on is actually book quality paper. So it's the same kind of paper that you would find in a recipe book. And that means, and it's also got a nice thick cover. So, you know, it's more like a bookazine, really. It's designed to be kept. So I know lots of you have been saying that you've been keeping your back copies and sending me little shelfies. Love that shelfie with all your books and magazines all stacked up um, because they are designed to be returned to again and again, you know, particularly seasonally. You know, if you want to look at recipes, you know, maybe from summer 2019 or 2018 or 2017, um, you know, you can go back and you can check because they are all designed to be seasonal and appropriate for the time of year that we're in. So, um, there we go. So I've got uh, some white miso, which is going in next, and also some vegetable stock. Usually I'd save my veg water. Um, I didn't actually save my vegetable water this weekend. Bad girl, should have done that. So instead I'm using a stock cube. This is a brand that I like, it's called Callo, and it's organic and it's very low salt. Vegetable stock cube, if you want to add more salt later you can, but I've used Callo as a brand for years. So I've actually made uh, stock here ready to go into my um, grains and then the other thing that you'll need for this is a little bit of cider vinegar and again cider vinegar is a fermented product so it's all about good gut health 
you know, you're going to have oodles of fibre from this dish because you've got your spelt grains and your, all your lovely veggies. Um, and then you've got your probiotics as well from the miso, from the uh, apple cider vinegar. Now you can make your own. So freshly fermented, they do a little cider vinegar starter, like the mother, and then you can make your own. It's super easy. Or if you want to make apple cider vinegar, you literally just chop up apples and put it in water and leave it to ferment. I mean, it's just that is that simple. I've got the recipe for that. Not that it really needs one in my good gut guidebook. So that was a, a, my first book on gut health I wrote about four years ago. Anyway, so I've got my apple cider vinegar there at the ready to go into this dish. And it also calls for spinach, but I don't have any spinach. Because <laughs> I'm not really playing by the rules here. I'm not following uh, the recipe. But what I do have is something that I grow every year in the garden. And this is Cavolo Nero. And it's just the most delicious thing. It, I started to eat it in Italy when I started to go to... Um, my husband's family home in Lazio which is just south of Rome and get introduced to lots of different vegetables that were eaten during the summer um, this, whoops, I'll take the lid off that because it is making a noise um, and Cavolo Nero is sort of an Italian favourite um, and this is what it looks like and this is the stuff that I grow so I went out and picked some from the garden this morning and it has holes in it and you know I'm always really joyful when I see holes in my greens particularly if I'm buying them because that means that it hasn't been sprayed with pesticides you know I think when things when veg is too perfect when it looks too pristine and it's all exactly uniform and the right shape and you know has no sign of kind of insect life having been on it okay it's annoying when too many insects get hold of it but you know let's share the love and you know we need pollinators and all the rest of it so I'm not at all bothered if I find a holy bit of cabbage and um, by the way do you remember I think was it last week or the week before I showed you this veg box called wonky veg I don't know if any of you have checked that out they're based in Brighton and they uh, pick up all the surplus so all the veg that is too wonky for supermarkets so stuff that gets rejected because it's not the right shape you know the carrots are bent or the turnips are too small or maybe it's just over capacity and the supermarkets won't take it from the farmers who've grown it they box it all up and they uh, deliver it as a food box so it's saving masses of waste and they also partner with various food charities and food banks and that kind of thing. So nice guys, shout out to you guys. I hope you're doing really well and good to give you a little bit of a plug. So I, um, not having any spinach, I just chopped up some Cavallo Nero and that's going to go into my stir fry. Full of iron, you know, greens are just bursting with goodness. And then you're going to make a miso dressing. And the miso dressing is you're going to use your white miso paste, which you've got here, hopefully. Um, I'm going to use the zest of a lime and some sesame oil and some local honey and that's just going to make my dressing. So in the meantime, let's see, I can hear that sizzling away. So right, I've got the onion and the celery in there and now I'm going to add the garlic. So that's going to go into my mix. I've got some chopped garlic and let that soften down a bit. Give that a bit of a stir. So look at that, great colour matches my dress, can you see? I wish I could say it was all carefully planned. <laughs> That'd be something, wouldn't it? Match my the colour of my recipes to my um, to my outfits. This one, I, I promise you, I did, I did take it off. I know I wore it on Friday and I did wear it over the weekend as well, but I just love it. This was Lisa Taylor and, you know, I'm standing in a hot kitchen and no Facebook, I haven't opened a window just for you. That's why I'm getting all hot because whenever I open a window, you say it sounds like a gale, so I have to stand in a really hot, sweaty kitchen. So, uh, and I've got a couple of lights in front of me as well, so, you know, the whole thing is slightly overheating. Um, pop that back on there. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just loved her designs. I discovered her on Instagram, and she is a sustainable fashion brand. She upcycles leftover bits of fabric. She upcycles saris. She's called Lisa Taylor Designs, if you're on Instagram. Um, and she sent me this to wear. It's got pockets. Don't we love something with pockets? And this, believe it or not, is an extra small. So she does extra small, small, medium and large. And, you know, so for anybody of any size, any shape. And it's just lovely. It's just like wearing a breeze. 
just like wearing a bit of air. It's gorgeous. And this is organic, hand-printed cotton um, made by lovely women's communities in India. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa, if you're watching. Uh, so there we go. So that's cooking. So I'm going to add my freaker, except that it's not freaker, it's spelt, to this. So shove that in there. And then I'm also going to pop in the... Uh, the white miso paste. So how much does it call for in the recipe? One tablespoon. So I'm going to stir that in. That is about a tablespoon. It's not very precise, but you don't have to be. Uh, give that a stir up. And then I'm basically going to cook that through with the vegetable stock and the apple cider vinegar and so I'm just going to leave that bubbling away so you all get all those lovely flavours infusing and uh, I hope my son is enjoying his high glycemic index pastry I shall revive him with some of this later on to sustain him throughout the rest of the day so that is that and then let me just check yep frika and miso and then the stock and the cider vinegar. And I'm going to use two tablespoons of cider vinegar. So let's pop that on there. First, the stock goes on, the vegetable stock. It can bubble away. The flavors coming through here is the, you know, I can smell them in the kitchen already. It's really good. Uh, and then what else was it? It was, oh yeah, it was the apple cider vinegar. Here we go. So a couple of tablespoons of that. That's about one. Um, that's about another. There we go. It's not an exact science, is it? This is cooking, not chemistry. Um, give that a bit of a stir. Sorry, I can hear a dog that wants to come into the kitchen. If you hear that little whiny, whiny noise, that's who it is. Right. There we go. Pop the lid on and let that kind of bubble away to get all its goodness. Right, so now the next thing that I was going to show you um, also needs just a little bit of time to cook. And, oh, thanks, Amy, you're putting all the links up on uh, Facebook. Thank you. It is really handy, isn't it, how Facebook keep the links? I often go back, actually, and just check it during the day just to make sure um, that everything is up there. Oh, honestly, has somebody changed the password on my iPad? I bet they have. Shush! Oh, it's all going a bit peeped on today, isn't it? One, nine, 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 six. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> um, right, so this is the uh, document that I get sent through um, electronically. So this is Amy, who's giving me some questions and picking up on comments. Okay, this one's come from Trish on Instagram. Say... Discovered Readly. Oh, yes. So Readly, that was the magazine subscription service I told you about earlier. So great you've discovered that. Um, waiting for my gut box, too, and have already printed the instructions. Well done. I'll talk about that in just a sec. Uh, also, where has Beauty Pie been all of my life? Uh, yeah, we love Beauty Pie. Um, I hope you got your free month. Use Liz Loves in capitals on Beauty Pie to get your free month. Um, and best of all, because of you, I'm back on HRT at 62, feeling 50. Thank you. You've given me the courage to do things I haven't been able to do for a long time. Carry on your fantastic work. Thanks, Trish. That is so nice. And I do hope that helps encourage others. I really do. Um, we're actually putting a nice new piece of content live on the website shortly. I was just editing it this morning, actually. It's uh, a bit of an update about the estrogel, estrodose issue, all to do with the estrogen gel. Um, so we've got a lot of information there just in one place, which is quite a nice resource. So thank you for, uh, to Ellie for putting that together. And we're just putting the finishing touches to that. Um, and then that will go up live on the website. Um, this is also on Instagram from Selena, who says, can I ask... Since making my own kefir, I've suffered from bloating, which I've never done before. I was thinking of just taking it every two days. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I think if you have not had any fermented food in your diet before, 
suddenly to introduce lots of different good gut bugs, you can get a bit of reaction. You can get a bit of good bug overload. Um, so the bloating can actually be a good sign, but of course it's not very comfortable and you don't want it to persist. So I would start just with a little bit. You know, if you've really not been having kefir or kombucha or any of this good stuff before, you just need a teaspoon or so. You know, that's it. You just do that a day um, or start with your lovely live yogurt. Who's made the Bulgarian yogurt, by the way? Oh my goodness, isn't that amazing? I just love it and it's so thick. That's what I can't get over. Oh, my poor doggy. My poor doggy's not very well, which I think is why she's... Oh, sweetheart. Ooh. Frozen. I'm just going to go and um, I will be back in one sec. Talk amongst yourselves. Because I'm going to... Go on, child boy. Go on. Hey. Go on now. Good girl. Oh, I hadn't realised she was in actually. Normally I'd kind of put them out into the field before um, before starting, but she's been a bit poorly, poor old thing. So I think she just sneaked off and lay flat behind the sofa and hope I wouldn't notice her. Anyway, she's fine now. So thank you. Thank you for all your concerns. Um, okay. Just cleaning the juicer now, says Alison. <laughs> Yeah, Anna, yeah, it's not been the smoothest of lives today, has it? Normally it's just seamless. But um, yeah, I hope that's not a kind of an omen for the week. I've got quite a tricky week, actually. So yeah, we'll see. But you know, I think with all these things, you just have to, you know, take the knocks and, and just kind of get on with it, don't you? Because it's not always plain sailing in life, but we deal with it and we've got a lovely, friendly community and it's all good. It's all good, or it's mostly good. Anyway, it's mostly good. Uh, so there we go. Yes. Yeah, so, Selena, I was talking about just going really slow with your good gut microbes. Um, if you haven't yet already downloaded my e-guide, then please do so. It's called A Flatter, Happier Tum. And it's all about things like bloating. <laughs> so I think it could be really good for you. Um, so that is on the Result Wellbeing website. Barbara on Facebook says... Would you use cooking or eating apples for making apple cider vinegar? You could use either. So it's no, uh, no, not massive difference, to be honest. Um, Alison, do you have any suggestions of a good blender? I have a Nutribullet already. Um, I've got a KitchenAid blender that I really like. I've also got a Smeg blender that I like. Um, I've got a very old Maggi mix, which I like. So um, I should probably road test them, actually, shouldn't I? Maybe get some of the new models called in and, and have a little look and see if there are new ones that we should try. I also just quite like the hand blenders, you know, just like the stick blenders. I think I've got a brawn one. Um, that works really well and is very easy. Uh, and Jeanette says on Instagram, do you cook two big meals a day? Uh, or is that your main meal? It really depends. I mean, to be honest, Jeanette, at the moment, life is not typical because it's summer holidays. And so I've got people like it at home, you know, eating me out of house and home as these um, great hulking teenage lads can do. So I would tend to try and do something a bit substantial for lunchtime. I don't have breakfast. So as you know, I kind of do the two meal a day thing. And uh, so we will definitely be having this for our lunch. And then I'm planning, hopefully, on doing um, a barbecue tonight. So I've got some lamb chops and some veggies for the barbecue. And I'll probably do some baked potatoes for the boys. So that's kind of, of how I do things. But if it's just me, then I'll tend to have a main meal early evening. So that will be my kind of my big meal. And then lunch, I'm always just on the run, so busy. So I might just do it like a brunch. I really like brunch. So usually around kind of midday or so, or just after I've done my live, if it's a Monday, a Wednesday or a Friday, then I will maybe do an omelette um, or just some simple eggs or avocado on toast or, you know, something like that. Um, right. OK, so let's just crack on with the next recipe. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of time. So this one is from the May, June issue. And this was from last year. This is a really nice feature, actually. There's a feature in the middle called Tea Time. don't know if you've seen that um, or if you remember it. And... Um, 
there we go so this is oh my goodness this is whole wheat crumpets don't have time to make those from scratch today but I might try and make them later and put pictures on my Instagram you can make your own whole wheat crumpets really good using spelt flour with a raspberry kombucha compote that's what I'm going to show you I'm going to show you how to do the compote because you can use that on lots of different things you can use it on pancakes you can put it into yogurt um, then there's also in this particular feature an almond and cherry bakewell slice oh how good is that I've forgotten about that recipe and also an earl grey and citrus spelt loaf cake there we go yum so grab your back issue or download it for free if you fancy so this one to do the kombucha compote it's so easy um, if you have made your kombucha already which you may have done where's my kombucha here we go so this is my kombucha that I've had on the go for the last kind of 10 days or so now using the SCOBY that is in the good gut box. So I'm going to use that or you can buy kombucha. Just make sure you're buying the real thing. So Holos is a lovely brand. I've talked about that before. Oh, I can see my son at the window now. What does he want? Go away. Can I help you? Honestly, I'm not going to be long. Can I help you? No. Okay. Goodbye. <sighs> Kids. Um, kombucha. Gather my thoughts. Kombucha, that's what I was talking about. So kombucha, you know, you know that when I'm talking about brands here, what I like to do, I guess because I'm a female founder of lots of different brands, I like to support others who are working to try and do things well, ethically, sustainably, responsibly, putting something back. Um, and particularly if they're female, founder-led brands, you know, life is tough as a brand builder and a brand founder. So let's kind of give people a hand up and, and mention brands that are doing it well. Um, and that's partly why I really like doing this, because I can use my platform to, or platforms to do that. Um, just give this a bit of a stir. Oh, no, that's doing nicely, actually. Um, so and Holos Kombucha they came onto my radar about a year or so ago and it was started by five London in five women in London and they make authentic kombucha with lots of different flavors they were one of the ones that I gave to Eamon and Ruth on this morning and I think they had the hibiscus hibiscus and ginger I think really delicious it's a pale pink color it's beautiful and they do a subscription box actually you can buy a box of 12 little glass bottles that get delivered maybe every month so you've always got something really healthy and, and fresh and soft to have in the fridge. Um, and they, as part of their initiative, part of their brand, they support women who have been trafficked or victims of sexual exploitation or modern day slavery. So, you know, it's a brand with a real heart. So, uh, so basically get your kombucha anyway, whichever way you want to do it, because um, this is what we're going to make. We're going to make a compote like this. Really delicious and good for you and sweet and yummy. So I'm going to take my saucepan here. It's super easy. You almost don't need a recipe really. Um, but this I created to go with the whole wheat crumpets. So I might have to make those later as well. So this is going to be two tablespoons of honey. Actually, I'm only gonna make half the quantity because I've already used half of it for that earlier one. So I'm gonna use about one tablespoon of honey Oh, this is such a delicious honey. This is one that I found in a shop in London. Um, it's chestnut honey, Seggiano raw honey. Absolutely delicious. And it tells you where it's come from. So you know it's the real thing. It's not just glucose sugar syrup from factory bees from China. Um, it's from Tuscany, southern Tuscany and Umbria. So not far from my family home in Italy. Um, yeah, just delicious. And it's, uh, yeah, it's made by... The nectars of spring flowering sweet chestnut trees. How delicious. So I'm going to use that and then I'm going to use a punnet of raspberries. So obviously it's good berry season at the moment so it's really good to be using either homegrown or um, bought raspberries. And then into that I'm going to use about 125 mils of kombucha. So I think I will um, measure this out just to be safe. So let me see if I can get that out of my kombucha jug. There we go. So that is 25. About 
like that. There we go. And literally, that's all it is. It's just honey, raspberries, and kombucha. You could, if you wanted to, after you'd made it, you could puree it and um, have it as a cordial. So you could mix it with sparkling water or maybe serve it over ice. If you wanted to, you could mix it with a little bit more kombucha, maybe if you wanted to flavour your kombucha. So I'm just going to set that on the stove. And then you just want that to bubble away, really. Make sure it doesn't burn, but it shouldn't do with all the liquid. And um, I'm just going to give the raspberries a bit of a prod. And that will just cook up and naturally thicken after about 20 minutes. So let's put that on there. Oops. Oh, now I'm really going to get hot with both of those open. Um, so there you go, raspberry kombucha compote. That was from last spring. Um, and this one is the miso baked aubergine cauliflower and frica salad. If you're joining me late, that's what I'm making at the moment. Oh, well done. You found the recipe of kombucha compote and the whole wheat crumpets. Yum, yum, yum. Um, Barbara, where can we purchase raw honey? Okay, so there is, if you go online and just sort of look up raw honey, there's a very good raw honey shop. I think they're based in Brighton uh, and they send all over the place. But the key thing, you should be able to get it locally. You know, if you look up local beekeepers in your area, um, you go into a local store like a deli or a farm shop, somewhere like that usually sells local honey. Just make sure that it says that it's the name of the beekeeper or the region because then you know that it's properly made honey uh, and it won't have been heat treated or processed. Um, the stuff that comes in, what you don't want is where it says it's a blend. Or it usually says on it a blend of EU and non-EU honeys. That means the non-EU bit, that's usually China. And as I've, I've talked about honey before, um, unfortunately, uh, there are these huge, huge warehouse factories where the bees are just kept and they're farmed and they're just fed glucose syrup to make you know, honey. But it's obviously not proper pollination. We don't get the pollinators out in the open air, which is what we need, doing their job and, you know, picking up all the different flavours from all the different varieties. So, you know, different honeys will taste differently because they, the bees have been feeding on different types of nectar. Um, oh dear, excuse me if I look a bit hot. Uh, it is rather warm in here. So I'm going to leave that still to cook a little bit because it's got a little bit more cooking to do. So I'll just give that a stir. Excellent. Smells good. Smells really good. Now when do I need to add the... Now, normally, if you were using spinach, you'd add that at the last minute. But Cavallo Nero actually is a bit tougher. You know, it's a bit more of a firmer leaf. So I am going to add that now, actually, because I think that's going to take a good kind of five, ten minutes to cook through. I hope I've got enough room in this pan. It's spilling over with good things. Let's see if we can get that mixed in. Sorry, I don't like having my back to you, but it's a bit tricky at the moment without um, just doing it here on my own on my phone. Oh, exciting news. So next week, I've got this morning crew coming down here to do some filming. So can you imagine? Yeah, I'm actually going to have a TV crew. So it won't just be me on my own with a phone or even me on Skype remotely patched into the studios to talk to Holly and Phil or Eamon and Ruth, but it will be proper little recorded films. So, yeah, I think it's just a minimum crew because obviously they can't do, um, you know, the big kind of things that we used to do and everybody will have to be at a distance, unfortunately. But yeah, at least it will mean that we'll be able to do something new and it'll be, I'm sure, all beautifully edited and put together in the way that proper professional TV people can do. So that's exciting. So that's, um, I'm recording a new series for them, little mini series that will go out in September. So looking forward to that. Uh, right, so I'm just gonna let that cook for the last few bits and then I'll show you how to garnish it. Um, but in the meantime, while that is doing, I wanted to give a shout out to, um, uh, Jules saying, does the heat not kill the good bacteria in the recipe? Yes, you need to be careful not to boil it. That's a really good point with your kombucha. 
you've still got some of the um, fermentate, fermented bugs in there. Um, and kombucha is actually relatively robust, um, but yes, you shouldn't, shouldn't overheat it. So really good point. Um, fermented things don't like getting hot, really hot. They don't mind getting cold. In fact, you can freeze them. You can send them to sleep. Just to show you, actually, if you haven't seen it, this was the Good Gut Box. And in here are six ferments. So you've got here, this is the SCOBY that you get. Um, so you get one of those that you can brew. You get organic fair trade sugar to get you started. You get some delicious tea, organic tea. Um, this is by a company called Blighty Brew. That comes in your box with it. You also get your milk kefir grains. This is in compostable packaging, by the way. You get your water kefir. And those of you who saw me in my studios last week, um, this is what it looks like. So your, these are your water kefir grains. And these have digested the sugars. So it's low sugar. Ooh, you can hear it fizz. Um, and this is what I was drinking over the weekend, actually. And then I'll just show you the grains because it's important to keep them. So once you've got your starter grains, you can just keep them going. So that's what water kefir grains look like. They look almost like kind of little clear crystals. Um, and then so you drain off the liquid and drink that. It's delicious on ice, either on its own or you can mix it with other things. Um, have a little cheeky water kefir martini um, or you can flavour it. It's really good. The other thing that you get in here, which I started last week, is the turmeric bug. You may have seen me do that. So the turmeric bug is something that you have to feed every day. It's a bit like a greedy child. You have to keep feeding it. So this is my turmeric bug that I'm making. And so I thought I would feed it live. So every day you need to feed it with a teaspoon of sugar. Don't worry about the sugar that you're using because the beneficial bugs, the good bug, the good bacteria uh, in that will digest the sugars. That's what it uses to grow and to feed on. So you do need to give it the sugar. And you feed it with a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of turmeric. And you do that every day for seven days. So I'm kind of halfway through. And then at the end of seven days, I will show you what to do with it. So just mix that in. And um, mm, smells good. Um, that's going to turn into quite a concentrated cordial that you then dilute to make this really delicious turmeric um, probiotic drink. Uh, so that's my water kefir, my milk kefir, and then of course you get your creme fraiche. So I don't know if you've made your creme fraiche. I had mine at the weekend. Absolutely delicious it was, and I've still got some left. And then you get your yogurt and you can either you choose between your Bulgarian yogurt. This is the thick one, really thick, creamy, creamy yogurt, a uh, very special variety of yogurt culture in this. You do need a yogurt maker. So either get an electronic yogurt maker. Again, you can get that from the freshly fermented website or make sure you can keep your yogurt somewhere warm, like an airing cupboard or you could put it on a metal tray on top of a hot water bottle can make it in a thermos flask, you know, but you just need to keep it warm for at least kind of eight hours. Or if you want to do cold yogurt, then you can get the Vili yogurt. So that's the choice when you get your good gut box. You can either have the Bulgarian yogurt with the yogurt maker um, or the warmth, or you get the Vili yogurt. And that's actually a Scandinavian variety and it makes a thin pouring yogurt. So if you want a yogurt to pour over your, maybe your rose petal granola like I had earlier, had a little sneaky bowl just before I came on. Uh, and you can use that for things like granola. You can use it as a, a like a single cream. So you could use that over berries. You could use that in smoothies, drinks, shakes, that kind of thing. So that's your choice. And then you also get some recipe cards that I have designed, which came from my Good Gut book. And you get um, just a little leaflet there telling you all about it. And then you download the instructions for each of those different things from the website. So I'd love to see and hear uh, comments about what you're doing and what you're making and all the different things that you are using the recipes for. Now, before I just finish this one, let me give this a little stir again. Actually, that is this one. So that's 
lovely that it's just doing a gentle simmer quite nicely. And then this one, I think the Cavalier Nero is nearly cooked through. Oh yes, that's looking great. That is looking really good actually. Bursting with goodness. Um, now while that just finishes, I just wanted to give another shout out or shout out to a brand that I became aware of recently. And this is another real great social justice female founder led brand. And she is called Sean Esther. So her website is seanester.co.uk and she makes the most wonderful pyjamas. So, um, <laughs> lots of lovely, lots of lovely comments. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so she sent me these um, and I'm really happy um, Sean to mention these. I need to wipe down my kitchen though because otherwise it's going to get dirty and I don't want that. I've got traces of turmeric and I'm about to show a lovely pair of pristine white pyjamas. Um, so yeah, this is her brand, Sean Esther London and she has a really interesting story and she supports women to enable them to get a safe night's sleep. Is that lovely? So her company actually supports three different charities. One is called the Marleybone Project, and that's the largest homeless centre for women in the UK. She also supports the Luminary Bakery, which you may have heard about, which provides um, training and employment to empower women post-trauma, so women who've really been disadvantaged and traumatized in many different ways, um, domestic violence or abuse or whatever, um, into giving them a fulfilling future. And then Mercy UK, this was an organization I didn't know about before, and Mercy UK, they offer a six month residential program for women between the ages of 18 and 30, struggling with low self-esteem, depression and self-harming behaviors. So just incredible, anyway, so. This is what she sent me and it comes in this really lovely bag. So if you're looking for a new pair of pyjamas or you're looking for a present for somebody that has a real heart to it, uh, you know, I think this would be great. I'd love to get this for my girls, for example. So this, I love this. Um, and the brand's called Sister Esther. And what I particularly like about these PJs is they've got cropped sleeves, which I love because I don't like things that are too long around my, um, around my wrist beautifully made and they're lined in a like a soft cotton pique and have a look at their website because they've got more designs you know just even like the little kind of plackets here and the piping on the pockets you've got two little pockets here love pockets as you know so pajamas tops with pockets and then look these are little shorty pajamas so I shan't be modeling these but um, you can use your imagination and they've got drawstring front and yeah, just, and they're lined in cotton voile. So they're really soft on the inside. Isn't that lovely? And let me tell you, I'll share a little bit about her website, her story, because I think it's worth sharing. Oops, excuse the noise. So um, yeah, so Sean Esther, so I looked her up online. You can go and have a look at her website. And she says, it's quite a heartfelt story actually, which I just wanted to take a moment to share with you. She says here, life often takes us on a different path to the one we'd planned or envisaged, envisaged, very true. Through the difficulties and challenges, we usually come out stronger and having grown as a person. With a career in buying at Selfridges, John Lewis and Waitrose, Sean no longer felt fulfilled and needed a greater purpose after the loss of her parents. Frustrated by the lack of affordable, luxurious pyjamas in beautiful cottons and wonderful cuts, Sean Esther was launched as a British pyjama brand to provide women with effortless, elegant nightwear that was traditional yet fun and would provide a solution for what to wear at breakfast <laughs> when hosting guests or holidaying with friends. Very good. Esther, so Sean Esther seeks to support disadvantaged women have a safe night's sleep through its partner charities and help these women fulfill their dreams. We want to give the feeling of comfort and security, like when you put on a pair of pyjamas. The capsule collection is designed in the UK and inspired by Sean's mother's ethos of fewer, better quality pieces. I know my friend Livia Firth would totally agree with that. 
Um, the Purpose Driven brand is best known for its blue and white focus and thoughtful details. We work with artisans in India and Cambodia who use classic textile techniques to bring the designs to life. And then there's a, a bit more about that too. But one thing that really just struck me when I was reading it earlier, um, talking about Sean, it says, Sean grew up with the heritage of family passionate for textiles and design. Her grandmother bought the entire contents of a haberdasher's shop when it was closing down and for many years to come Sean would be inspired by the collection of buttons ribbons silk threads and pattern books isn't that great so what an amazing thing to come through adversity and create a brand to see an opportunity and then along the way to put something very real back and it just says at the top of her website, um, thank you for supporting our journey in helping disadvantaged women have a safe night's sleep. Love it, love it, love it. And even better, um, there is a discount. So I didn't ask for uh, a discount code because I didn't think it was appropriate really. Um, but when I went on to their website just to check out these, um, I saw they come in four sizes and uh, the, uh, this is normally £95, this little set, so, you know, quite chunky, uh, but it's currently reduced and on sale for 57 so get a relative bargain with a heart, and I do love it, and I love the little bag that it comes in, and I love everything about it, so thank you, Sean Esther, wishing you very, very well with your venture, and thank you sending those to me and I hope that lots of people go and check you out something else actually very quickly that you might want to check out I've just been sent this by Beauty Pie oh it's hot um, now you know me and fragrance and floral fragrances and my absolute fave the prosody neroli nuance which I still adore but it's quite full-on in the heat and I was looking maybe for something a bit lighter thinking hmm, maybe I might try something lighter Anyway, lo and behold, I got sent this brand new one from Beauty Pie, and it is Mandarin Leaf, White Cedar and Freesia. I'm not sure if it's on their website yet. If it's not, it will be coming in very soon, so do check it out. It's a French fragrance, um, obviously a rock bottom price, and it's got vetiver and freesia and tea and white cedar and musk, and it's, it's absolutely delicious. Mandarin Leaf, White Cedar and Freesia comes in a very classy looking bottle so it's kind of like um, a soft eau de cologne and it's really really nice really pretty so I do recommend that if you are a uh, member of Beauty Pie if you're not use Liz Loves to get your free month and that is a lovely light summer wafty kind of scent for wafting around in right I think I'd better shut up now because I can't believe I have been talking yes so I got medium those were medium they do extra small small medium and large but you can see they're quite generous um, and they're drawstring so um, anyway all the sizes would be on the Sean Esther website um, yeah the perfume really nice I'm sorry it's not smell -a vision and you can't smell it very quickly uh, I'm just going to show you let me take that off I'm just going to compile my salad because I shall have my son, no doubt, um, coming in shortly saying, what's for lunch? Um, so that has pretty much cooked through. Sorry if you can't see that very well. This, you can serve hot or cold. Um, I actually quite like it cold. Uh, and I just find that the flavours actually get better the next day. So this is something that you can keep and you could reheat it if you fancied a hot dish. Um, or you could just have it as it is and then you will need just to arrange your roasted veggies so I've got my um, I hope Yotam is watching and proud uh, I've got my aubergines and my roasted cauliflower running out of space so yeah so you would just arrange those kind of on top like this with a few of the um, aubergines and these have been roasted with lots of oil olive oil uh, or you could use rapeseed oil oh that's so good so good my tummy is rumbling already what everybody's lunch plans are you eating lunch while you're watching perhaps or maybe you're going to go and make something um, 
Okay, so now there is a uh, there's a miso dressing which is using that miso paste, um, and then once you've done that, so the miso dressing, I'll just run through very quickly what it is, um, rather than boring it. So it's basically the white miso paste, and you mix that with a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of sesame oil and honey, and you thin it with water just to make your dressing super easy, and then you sprinkle on your pomegranate seeds. So that goes all over like that. And then you'd need some fresh parsley or coriander if you like coriander. I don't like coriander, so I always use parsley instead. But that's your, oops, Instagram has gone off. There you go. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my, my lunch dish. Actually, I'm planning a barbecue tonight, so maybe I won't have it for lunch. Maybe I'll keep it as a side dish for tonight. Ah, right. Thank you for being with me. I'm sorry it's been a bit of a long one today, hasn't it? But just a lot to pack in. I just wanted to share lots of good things with you. Um, all the links are up. So Instagram, head to Linktree, the link in my bio. Uh, you'll see there the link to Readly if you want to get your free month of magazines. There's also the link to subscribe. Don't forget, this magazine is coming out of retail and we're about to print the September October issue I know really exciting I've got it sitting on my laptop I've got the final version to uh, read through later on today and then we're going to press the print button so if you want to get it you're going to have to have subscribed because one of the reasons for doing this is to make it more ethical and more sustainable so rather than printing tens of thousands of extra copies that get pulped we are just going to print for those who want to subscribe so if you haven't subscribed you won't be on the list to get it and you'll have to then wait another two months until the November issue comes out. OK, so at the moment there is an offer. You get six issues for the price of five. You get free UK PMP. Yes, we can send it abroad. It's not a problem. You have to pay the extra postage. Um, and at the moment you get your free £10 Neil's Yard vouchers. Now, for everybody who's asked about that, the voucher doesn't come with the magazine. The voucher is sent to you on an email by Warners, who are the subscription people, the magazine subscription people. And they send it just as soon as your bank payment has been processed. They email you with the voucher. So don't be surprised if it's not inside the magazine. It will come as an email from Warners. Anyway, any problems, all the details and information is on the Lazar Wellbeing website. So I'm going to love you and leave you. I've got more of my books to sign. Thank you for all your kind comments about my yearbook too. I've got a whole stash of those to go and sign and get into the post now. Hopefully they'll catch the post later on today. I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Thank you very much for being part of my community. It's lovely to be able to chat to everybody. Sending hearts back. I'm sorry I can't do physical hearts, but I send you hearts and lots of love. See you Wednesday, if not before. Bye.